In the vast expanse of our solar system, there is a celestial body that has captivated the imagination of humanity for centuries. A world so close to our own, yet so alien and unexplored. This is the Moon, our cosmic neighbor, and the future site of the first human colony beyond Earth. The Moon has long been a target for space exploration, with the Apollo missions of the 1960s and 70s marking the first time humans set foot on another world. But now, NASA and SpaceX are embarking on a new era of lunar exploration, one that will not only send astronauts back to the Moon, but also establish a permanent presence on its surface. NASA's Artemis program is the most ambitious space exploration project since the Apollo era. Named after the twin sister of Apollo in Greek mythology, Artemis aims to land the first woman and the next man on the Moon. Originally planned to happen in 2024 and to establish a sustainable human presence on the lunar surface by 2028, however, delays and setbacks have pushed the schedule back some years. But Artemis is not just about returning to the Moon, it's about using the Moon as a stepping stone for future missions to Mars and beyond. By learning to live and work on the Moon, NASA hopes to develop the technologies and experience necessary to send humans to the Red Planet and other destinations in the Solar System. So, where exactly will this lunar colony be built? NASA has its sights set on the Moon's South Pole, a region that has never been explored by humans before. The South Pole is of particular interest because it contains areas that are permanently shadowed, meaning they never receive direct sunlight. These permanently shadowed regions are extremely cold, with temperatures that can dip down to negative 390 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 235 degrees Celsius. But why would NASA want to build a colony in such a harsh environment? The answer lies in the ice. Scientists believe that the permanently overshadowed regions of the South Pole contain vast quantities of water ice, which could be used to sustain human life on the Moon. Water can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen, providing both breathable air and rocket propellant. In essence, the South Pole could become a cosmic gas station, allowing spacecraft to refuel on their way to more distant destinations. But the South Pole is not just about permanently shadowed regions. There are also areas known as the peaks of eternal light, which are bathed in nearly continuous sunlight. These peaks are ideal locations for solar panels, which could provide a reliable source of power for the lunar colony. The rim of the Shackleton Crater, located just 2-3 to three kilometers from the Moon's South Pole, is a prime candidate for a lunar base. The crater's rim is illuminated for about 90% of the lunar day, making it an ideal spot for solar power generation, using advanced photovoltaic arrays and regenerative fuel cells. The crater's interior, which is permanently shadowed, is believed to contain substantial water ice deposits. This water ice could be harvested using specialized mining equipment and rovers designed to operate in the extreme cold and vacuum of the permanently shadowed regions. The harvested water ice would be transported to processing facilities where it would be melted, purified, and electrolyzed, produce oxygen for breathable air, and hydrogen for use as a rocket propellant. The Shackleton Crater's unique combination of near-constant sunlight and access to water ice makes it an attractive location for the first lunar colony, as it provides the necessary resources for sustaining human life and supporting future exploration efforts. Building a lunar colony will be no small feat, and it will require a massive mobilization of resources and technology. The first step is to send robotic missions, like the Viper rover, to the Moon's South Pole to scout potential landing sites and test resource extraction and power generation technologies. Once a site is selected, NASA and SpaceX will initiate a series of cargo missions to deliver essential components, including heavily shielded habitat modules with advanced life support systems, versatile lunar rovers, and scientific instruments. Protecting astronauts from the harsh lunar environment, particularly radiation, is a significant challenge. NASA is developing new suit designs with enhanced radiation shielding and dust-resistant features to address this issue. Extracting and utilizing the Moon's natural resources is crucial for the lunar colony's success. The permanently shadowed regions of the South Pole likely contain water ice, which can be mined and processed to create breathable air and rocket propellant. 
specially mined equipment, such as microwave beams, will be used to extract the water ice, which will then be purified and electrolyzed to separate hydrogen and oxygen. The lunar regolith also contains valuable resources, such as rare earth metals and helium-3. Rare earth metals are essential for various advanced technologies, while helium-3 could potentially fuel future nuclear fusion reactors. To extract these resources, the lunar colony will need to develop advanced mining and processing technologies that can withstand the lunar environment, such as robotic mining systems, 3D printing for specialized equipment, and closed-loop life support systems. While NASA is leading the Artemis program, they are not working alone. SpaceX, the private spaceflight company founded by Elon Musk, has been selected as one of the key partners in the program. SpaceX has already developed the Falcon Heavy rocket and the Starship spacecraft, which are both essential components of the Artemis missions. The Starship in particular is a game-changer for lunar exploration. This massive spacecraft is designed to carry up to 100 passengers and cargo to the Moon and Mars, and it will be able to land on the lunar surface using its own propulsion system. The Starship will serve as the primary transport vehicle for the Artemis missions, ferrying astronauts and supplies between Earth and the Moon. In addition to Starship, SpaceX is also working on a lunar lander called the Starship Human Landing System (HLS). This vehicle will be used to transport astronauts from the Starship to the lunar surface and back again. The HLS will be capable of carrying up to four astronauts and 100 tons of cargo, making it an essential tool for building and maintaining the lunar colony. The establishment of a lunar colony is a monumental undertaking, one that will require the best minds and the most advanced technologies that humanity has to offer. But the rewards are incalculable. By learning to live and work on the moon, we will be taking the first steps for becoming a truly spacefaring species. The Artemis program and lunar colony at the South Pole represent a new era of space exploration, one that will inspire generations to come. As we look up at the moon in the night sky, we can imagine a future where humans are living and working on its surface, exploring its secrets, and using it as a launching pad for even greater adventures. The road ahead is long and challenging, but with the combined efforts of NASA and other partners around the world, we will make this dream a reality. The first lunar colony will be a testament to human ingenuity, perseverance, and the unquenchable thirst for exploration that has driven us to the stars. This is the Space Technician, signing off for now. And I'll see you, Space Cowboys, in the next one.